Okay, so the observer. So remember that the observer is the practice of observing uh, objects. So what is an object? For example, if you see, uh, like a mug or a tree is an object. And when there's observing of a tree or a mug, there's the clear spiritual experience that the, the observing, that you're not a tree. You are the observer of a tree or a mug on the table. So the next thing comes, uh, so when, when you experience that the observer observes the object, when you are the observer and observe a tree, the tree is the tree, you are not the tree. When the observer is observing a mug on the table, you are the observing of the mug, but the mug is not you. The mug is an object, the tree is an object. Okay, so let's go deeper. What about thoughts? Thoughts are just passing by. The sky is blue, the table is brown, whatever it is, thoughts of the future or whatever, but they're passing by. What observes thoughts? Can you be the observing of thoughts? Can you be the detached observer of thoughts? Can you be the uninterested observer of thoughts? Can you be the thoughtless observing when even thoughts are so meaningless that there is no awareness of thoughts any longer? As you go into these deeper states, as St. Francis said, what you're looking for is where you're look, looking from. So you're going into the deeper observer, not getting lost or hooked into objects like thoughts. If you hook into a thought because it, it grabs your attention, just unhook and just be back in the detached observing, clear of thoughts so that there's that detachment from anything that passes in the mind. Next is the body. Is there any awareness of body, the physicality of the body, a seat, any sensations in the body, is there any tightness in the chest, any tiredness? That's an object, tiredness is an object. The awareness of the body is an object. Can you be the detached observer of the body, the shape of the body? Can you, if there's any, if there's tiredness or a fog or anything, something observes tiredness, you know, tiredness can come and go, the awareness of the body can come and go, but what's observing? What's always here observing? even as different feelings arise in the body or, or different awarenesses arise and come and go. What observes it all? Can you be the detached observing? The observer that observes tiredness or the body or anything in the body. And if you're the observer and that has interest in anything of the body or in the body, can, is there a deeper observer, a more uninterested observer observing that observer in which there is no body? which is a bodiless observing. Next, is there any sense of time? Is there an aware awareness of time? Is there a tracking of time? If there's any sense of time, can you be the observer of time? In the observer or the witnessing of time, does time exist? And if time exists in this observer, then is there a deeper observer and where there is no sense of time? Next is location. Is there any sense of being located somewhere, somewhere in a room or, or having a location? If there is awareness of a location, which is an object, what's observing that sense of location? Can you be the observing of location? And in this observing, is, that a, is the observer in location or is it locationless? Is the observer in time or is it timeless? Is the observer observing a body or is it bodiless? So if your experience now going into the deeper observer has any type of limit, constriction, any kind of constraint, whatever that constraint is, it's an object. Can you be the observer of whatever object that is? And take it back and see if there can be any limits to the deep observer, any kind of constriction, any sense of time, body, thought, even if there's images, what observes all images? Does an image exist in that which observes images, thoughts, body, time, sensations? So as you go deeper, just keep going deeper into the observer. As St. Francis says, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. Is there a deeper observer wherever you're at? I'm going to stop the recording. <clears throat>